saluti a tutti alla nostra celebrazione del gran feste di San Giuseppe. La messa stasera è offerta per l'anima di Giuseppe Minitoli. Cominciamo alla pagina 1. Nel nome del Padre, e del Figlio, e dello Spirito Santo. Amen. La grazia del Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, l'amore di Dio, Padre, e la comunione dello Spirito Santo sia con tutti voi. Fratelli, per celebrare degnamente i santi misteri, riconosciamo i nostri peccati. Confesso a Dio Onnipotente e a voi, fratelli, che ho molto peccato in pensieri, parole, opere e omissioni. Per mia colpa, mia colpa, mia grandissima colpa, e supplico la piatta sempre Vergine Maria, gli angeli, i santi e voi, fratelli, di pregare per me il Signore Dio nostro. Dio Onipotente, abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci caduca alla vita eterna. che hai voluto affidare gli inizi della nostra redenzione alla custodia premurosa di San Giuseppe. Per sua intercessione concedi alla tua Chiesa di cooperare fedelmente al compimento dell'opera di salvezza. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio, chi è Dio, e vive e regna con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Se tutti per piacere, a te. Dal secondo libro di Samuele, in quei giorni, la parola del Signore fu rivolta a Natale. Va e riferisci al mio servo Davide, dice il Signore, forse tu mi costruirai una casa perché io vi abiti. Ma io non ho abitato una casa dal mondo, ho fatto uscire gli ebriati da Egitto fino ad oggi. Sono andato da Gondo sotto una tenda, in una padiglione, finché ho camminato ora qua, ora là in mezzo a tutti gli ebriati. I ebriati. O fosse mai detto ad alcuni dei giudici a cui mi avevo mandato di pascere il mio popolo Israele, perché non mi edificate, edificate una casa di cedro? Ora dunque, divertirai al mio servo Davide, 
ma se dice il signore delle eserci, eserci io ti presi dal pascoli mentre seguì il Grecia, perché ti fosse il capo di Israele, il mio popolo, sono stato con te ovunque sei andato. Anche per il futuro distruggerò davanti a tutti i suoi nemici e renderò il nome grande come quello dei grandi che sono sulla terra. Fisserò un lungo arrivere il mio popolo e ve lo pianterò perché abiti una casa sua e non sia più turbato agli iniqui sono io ho in mano. Come in passato, al tempo in cui avevamo stabilito, i giudici sul mio popolo Israele gli darò risposto liberando loro a tutti i suoi nemici. Il Signore ti farà grande perché, poiché farà una casa. Quando i tuoi giorni saranno compiuti e gli giacerai con i tuoi padri, io assugerò, assugerò dopo Dopo di te la discendenza uscita dal tuo vincere e renderò stabile sul regno. Egli edificherà una casa al mio nome e io renderò stabile per sempre il trono del suo regno. Io gli sarò padre e gli mi sarò figlio, sarà figlio. Se farà male, io li castigherò con verga, l'uomo con i colpi che dai figlio da, da uomo e non li terrò da lui il mio favore come lo, come lo dichiarato dal sol che ho rimorso dal trono dinanzi a te la tua casa e il tuo regno saranno salvi per sempre davanti a me e il tuo trono sarà adesso stabile per sempre Natan fal, parlò a Davide con tutte queste parole secondo questa visione parole di Dio The, 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 the response for tonight, the response for stasera, is the Signore è fedele per sempre, on page 7. Dio Signore è fedele per sempre. Canterò senza fine la grazia del Signore. Con la mia bocca annunzerò la tua fedeltà nei secoli, perché ha detto, la mia grazia rimane per sempre, la tua fedeltà è fondata nei cieli. Dio Signore è fedele per sempre. Ho stretto una lenzia con il mio letto, ho curato a Davide del mio servo, stabilirò per sempre le tue dis, discendenza, discendenza, ti darò un trono che dui, che dui nei secoli. Dio sei il Signore, e il Signore, e sempre. Egli mi invocherà, tu sei il mio padre, il mio Dio, e roccia della mia salvezza. Vi conserverò sempre la mia grazia, la mia lenzia, Elenzia e gli sarà fedele. Dio si insegna la mia fedele. La seconda lettura, fa la lettura di San Paolo Apostoli a Romani. Non in virtù della legge fondata da Abramo o alla sua discendenza, la promessa di diventare erede nel mondo, ma in virtù della giustizia giustizia che viene dalla fede. E Redi quindi si è diventato la fede, perché cioè, cioè, cioè sarà per grazia e così per la promessa di sicura figura per la tutta discendenza, non soltanto per quella che diverrà della legge, ma anche per quella che diverrà della fede di Abramo, un bel padre di tutti noi. Infatti sta sta scritto che ho conosciuto il Padre molto poco, è il nostro Padre, davanti a Dio, nel quale credete che da vita ai morti e chiama la esistenza delle cose che ancora non esistono. Egli è per fede sperando contro ogni speranza e così diviene Padre da molti popoli e lì era stato detto. Così sarà la tua discendenza. Parola di Dio. Lui di questi. Gavaggio II, San Luca. 
I genitori di Gesù si recavano tutti gli anni a Gerusalemme per la festa di Pasqua, quando egli ebbe dodici anni, vi salerono di nuovo secondo la usanza, ma trascorsi i giorni della festa, mentre riprendevano la via del ritorno, il fanciullo Gesù rimase a Gerusalemme, senza che i genitori si ne accorgessero. Credendolo nella carovana, fecero una giornata di viaggio e poi si misero a cercarlo tra i parenti e i conoscenti. Non avendolo trovato, tornarono in cerca di lui a Gerusalemme. Dopo tre giorni lo trovarono nel Tempio, seduto in mezzo ai datori mentre li ascoltava e li interrogava. E tutti quelli che lo dicono erano pieni di stupore per la sua intelligenza e le sue risposte. Al vederlo restarono stupidi e sua madre gli disse, figlio, perché hai fatto così? Ecco, tuo padre e io conosciti ti cercavamo e egli rispose perché mi cercavate non sapevate che io devo occuparmi della cosa del padre mio ma essi non compressero le sue parole partì dunque con loro e tornò a Nazareth e stava loro sottomesso sua madre servava tutte queste cose nel suo cuore. Parola del Signore, lode a te, o Cristo. Se tu ti chiedi, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If you have children, and there comes a point when you're new in an area and you have to go somewhere and you need someone to watch your children while you go. How do you pick someone to watch your children? How do you have confidence in a stranger to watch your children? How do you know what this person is going to say to your children, or how they will act around your children, or what your children will learn from being with them. It's a great responsibility to choose someone to babysit your children, those who you love most in the world, to entrust in someone's care. Now, Understand, from all eternity, God planned to send his son into the world. And very carefully, he prepared a whole people, Israel. He prepared them to receive his son. And his son would take genes from that people through the Blessed Mother. And God waited until Mary would be born in order to let this whole process begin. But at the same time, in God's mind, the image of family that God gave us included a mother, Mary, and it would include a father as well. All the possibilities of human action and reaction were included there, the male, the female. Mary was chosen. How does God choose who will be the father of his son? Who will protect him and act in the role of father? Because in Jewish tradition, it was 
the father's role to teach the child religion, not the mother. Um, I always get the impression that the female is the more religious of the species, usually. But in the Jewish tradition, whether that was true or not, it was the man who was entrusted with the child's religion. For instance, on a Saturday, the woman was not obliged to go to the synagogue. The man was. And the man, the father, the husband, took the children to the synagogue with him. If the mother came, the children sat with the father, not with the mother. In the ancient synagogues, there would be a gallery where the women would sit, but the children were with the father. And prayers were taught to the child by the father. And the scriptures were taught to the child by the father. And if the child had a question about religion or the commandments, the child would be saying, go to your father. He will tell you. So the religious role of father in ancient Israel was a very important one. Now God is sending his son into the world. He's got a mother chosen. He's going to need someone who will take the role of father and teach his child prayer and take his child to synagogue to learn to worship him. What man and what kind of a man is God going to entrust his son to? And we look at the person of Joseph that he chose. And he's not what you would expect God to choose. He's not a great intellectual. He's not someone who spent all his days studying the Bible and reading it and comparing it. He was a carpenter. He had a job. He, he worked in a shop and he made things. People needed things made. St. Joseph had his tools. He made things out of wood according to people's specifications. Did St. Joseph know how to measure? Yes. Uh, he knew how to measure. He knew how to put the marks. He knew how to tailor make a thing that a person needed according to their specifications. Could St. Joseph read? No. There would be no reason that St. Joseph read. School was only for the very few who showed promise. As a young man, he was a carpenter. Probably around 10 or 11 years old, he would have been apprenticed to another carpenter to teach him the trade until he was like 15 or 16, and then he would take the trade on himself. But school was not in the horizon. It was not necessary. Besides, there was nothing for him to read anyway. Nothing was printed. There were no books. So we could be pretty certain that the man that God entrusted his son to could not read. Probably not. Jesus read. He was sent to learn to read. St. Joseph wasn't. And growing up as a child, if our Lord wanted to ask a question, who would he ask? Joseph. As a child, when our Lord took his first steps, who held his hands, well, his feet, with the bow legs that the little kids have, tried to touch the floor? Joseph. If in the night the Christ child cried, blessed mother would get up, Joseph would get up sometimes as well. When there was difficulty, when there was danger for the Christ child, who was it that God went to? God sent an angel to Joseph and told him what to do. And Joseph followed the instructions of the angel and took Mary and infant Jesus and took them down into Egypt where they would be safe from Herod who desired to kill him. This is who God chose. 
This is what he had to do. What was the man like? And it's just one word that would describe Joseph. And the word is good. He was goodness. In his soul, he was good. God can only take the basic goodness in a person, and then God can build on top of that goodness. But if there's not goodness in the person, God can't put that there. The person has to put that there themselves. So <clears throat> in choosing someone, God shows someone of infinite, deep goodness, simplicity and goodness. He was a religious man. He believed in the faith God had revealed to the world. He followed all the prescriptions of the law of Moses that were written, the Old Testament. He wasn't lazy about his religion. If God had asked that they go to Jerusalem once a year, Joseph closed his shop, walked three days with his family down to Jerusalem, spent his time at the temple for Passover, and then walked three days back with his family. He didn't use the excuse, we live far. Oh, it's not convenient for me. I'm going to lose money if I close the coffin to shop. No, this is, this is my religion. This is what God gave me. I fulfilled everything that God asked for me to worship God. I want to do this. It's not a terrible burden for me to do this. So as far as his faith goes, and the practice of his faith, he was good. He was faithful to his Jewish religion. As far as other people go, there's the wonderful gospel we read before Christmas, where when Joseph and Mary know that Mary is with child, the Son of God has entered her. Joseph says, I don't know what this is about. It's not my child. I don't want her to get in trouble. I don't want to make any more difficulty for her than is necessary. I will divorce her quietly, which means, parentheses, don't blame him and say, it's his child. Joseph, fine. I don't want to make trouble. Now you think about in our world, if someone does the slightest injustice to me, we live in a victim society. Everyone looks for a reason to be a victim and cry about it for the rest of their lives. This was said to me, this was done to me, this was happened. Rather than just get on with life, we become a victim society. St. Joseph had every right to play victim and scream loud and scream long. And his answer was, no, but that's only going to make trouble for Mary. I don't know what this is about. I don't understand what happened, but it's OK. I don't want to make trouble. I don't need to be a victim. Goodness in himself. Also, you look at today's gospel. When the Christ child was lost, he took his role so seriously that after searching for the Christ child three days in Jerusalem, he had totally exhausted himself. He couldn't speak. He was the man. He should have spoken to the Christ child. But it says very clearly in the gospel, he was so exhausted, frustrated, he couldn't form words. So what does that tell us about Joseph? That he took his role seriously. What God asked him to do was very important to him. And the thought that he had failed in what God asked him to do, sent him into a frenzy for three days searching for the Christ child. And he couldn't speak at the end of those three days. And I'll remind you of a theory I have. Again, just my theory. 
Why did our Lord wait until he was 30 to begin his public ministry? Because Joseph was dead by that point. And I think Joseph was a person who in himself was so good that seeing people in their cruelty to the Christ, he wouldn't have been able to handle it. He who got so frustrated at the thought of losing the Christ child, if he saw what happened at the crucifixion, he who was so good could not imagine malice in other people. He who was all kindness could not imagine hatred and cruelty in others. And our Lord, out of love for Joseph, spared him and waited until he was dead and then began his public ministry. I have that as a theory of mine. And at the end of his life, he dies before our Lord begins. So our Lord is 30 years old. Joseph is already dead. It doesn't tell us when Joseph died. It just doesn't mention him anymore. It mentions Blessed Mother, Christ being invited to a wedding at Cana during the beginning of our Lord's ministry, but it just doesn't mention Joseph. So if that wouldn't happen, why would they invite Mary and Jesus and not invite Joseph? He was dead at that point. And it's left to our imagination. What was the death of Joseph about? The man chosen by God to teach Christ about God. The man chosen by God to take Christ by the hand and take him to the synagogue on Saturday where he would pray to his Father in heaven. In that painting of the death of Joseph, if you look closely at that painting, he's on a very crude bed, a bed that he might have made himself for his house, for himself, for Mary, his, his wife. And Christ has St. Joseph on his shoulder. Think to yourself, who took care of Joseph in his illness? Uh, they didn't have hospice care. There was no one that would come to the house, no visiting nurse. The family took care of someone who was sick. So the Blessed Mother and Christ took care of Joseph. And if Joseph had to be moved or he had to be changed or the bed had to be, the linens had to be changed, who did it? Christ and the Blessed Mother. And in that wonderful portrayal, you see, Christ has Joseph. He's moving him, and he has him on his shoulder. And you look at the statue, and you say, yes, because that's the shoulder where he held the Christ child as an infant. And at that moment of his death, Christ is giving him strength. Christ is showing him the angels in heaven. Christ is assuring him of his place in heaven because of his goodness. Where does that leave us? So we've looked at who St. Joseph is. We understand why he was chosen. Where does that leave us with? It leaves us with something that is said in the Old Testament of the Bible. Go to Joseph. When there is trouble, when there is a problem, when there is a need, go to Joseph. The man who is the father of a family, go to Joseph. The person who can't sleep because they're troubled, as Joseph was three times in the Bible, go to Joseph. Why go to Joseph? Because except for the Blessed Mother, is there anyone in heaven who was not more intimate with Christ? 
is there anyone in heaven who, when they ask something of Christ, after Mary, his mother, Christ could possibly refuse the prayer that that person brings to him. Go to Joseph. You could have no more powerful friend in heaven. Why? Because Christ's love for him has to be very, very special. What was the basis of that love? What made God the Father from all eternity choose Joseph? What made Christ love this man who took the role of father? The same thing that will make God love us. Great deeds, great intellectual ability, a nuclear scientist. No. Good things. Just kindness in treating other people, not judging other people, not being so dramatic that we have to make the world spin around us. Just the goodness of a person who was kind, didn't suck up all the oxygen in a room, was willing to take a back seat when anything was going on. The goodness that was Joseph pleased God, continues to please him. And we go to Joseph and keep his feast day and look upon him as a patron and a special friend in heaven. St. Joseph, our prayer this evening, teach us, like yourself, just to be good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Siamo alla pagina 27, page 27. Benedetto sei tu, Signore, Dio dell'universo, dalla tua bontà abbiamo ricevuto questo pane, frutto della terra e del lavoro dell'uomo. Lo presentiamo a te perché diventi per noi cibo di vita eterna. L'acqua guida al vino sia segno della nostra unione con la vita divina di colui ha voluto assumere la nostra natura umana. Pregate, fratelli, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. 
il Signore e cesa della tua parte questo sacrificio a lode e gloria del suo nome per il bene nostro e di tutta la sua santa chiesa preghiamo accogli Signore il nostro servizio sacerdotale e donale la stessa fedeltà e purezza del cuore che animò San Giuseppe nel servire il tuo unico figlio nato della Vergine Maria per Cristo nostro Signore. Il Signore sia con voi. In alto i nostri cuori. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È veramente cosa buona e giusta, nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza, rendere grazie sempre in ogni luogo a te, Signore, Padre Santo, Dio onnipotente ed eterno. Noi ti glorifichiamo, ti benediciamo, ti lodiamo nella solennità di San Giuseppe, egli uomo giusto. Da te fu prescelto come sposo della Vergine Maria, Madre di Dio, e servo saggio e fedele. Fu posto a capo della tua famiglia per custodire come padre il tuo unico figlio, concepito per opera dello Spirito Santo, Gesù Cristo, nostro Signore, per mezzo di Lui, sì, Alientando gli angeli nell'eternità, adorano la gloria del tuo volto. Al loro canto concede, o oh Signore, che si uniscano le nostre umili voci nel inno del lodo. Please kneel. Siamo alla pagina 35, page 35. Padre, veramente santo, fonte di ogni santità, santifica questi doni con la fusione del tuo spirito, perché diventino per noi il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo, nostro Signore. Egli offrendosi liberamente alla sua passione prese il pane e rese grazie lo spezzò lo diede ai suoi discepoli disse pre prendete e mangiatene tutti questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi Dopo la cena, allo stesso modo, prese il calice e rese grazie, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza 
versato per voi e per tutti, in remissione dei peccati, fate questo in memoria di me. e ti rendiamo grazie per averci ammessi alla tua presenza a compiere il servizio sacerdotale. Ti preghiamo umilmente per la comunione al corpo e al sangue di Cristo. Lo Spirito Santo ci unisca in un solo corpo. Ricordati, Padre, della tua Chiesa diffusa su tutta la terra. Rendila perfetta nell'amore in unione con il nostro Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo Giovanni e tutto l'ordine sacerdotale. Ricordati dei nostri fratelli che si sono addormentati nella speranza della resurrezione e di tutti i defunti che si affidano alla tua clemenza, a metterli a godere la luce del tuo volto. Di noi tutti abbi misericordia Donaci di aver parte alla vita eterna, insieme con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, e con gli Apostoli e tutti i Santi che in ogni tempo ti furono graditi. E in Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio, canteremo la tua gloria. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Obbedienti alla parola del Salvatore e formati al suo divino insegnamento, ossiamo dire, Padre nostro che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la tua volontà come in cielo, così in terra. Dacci oggi il nostro pane quotidiano e remetti a noi i nostri debiti, come noi li remettiamo ai nostri debitori, e non ci indurre in tentazione, ma libraci dal male. Amen. Libraci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni, e con l'aiuto della tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nella testa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Tuo è il regno, tu la potenza e la gloria dei secoli. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace, non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa e donale unità e pace secondo la tua volontà tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli Amen. la pace del Signore sia sempre con voi Amen.
Mr. Dorkey, please kneel. Beati li invitati alla cena del Signore, ecco l'agnello di Dio, che togli i peccati del mondo. O oh, Signore, non sono degno di partecipare alla tua mensa, ma di soltanto una parola e io sarò salvato. Il corpo di Cristo mi custodisce della vita eterna. Il sangue di Cristo mi custodisce per la vita eterna. So we've got the St. Joseph pastries, the Sphinx and the Zeppeli, and we have the bread, the blessed bread for St. Joseph across the street after Mass, if you would wish 
we, there is a tradition that even if during Lent you gave up desserts and cake and cookies for the feast of Saint Joseph to honor the foster father of our Lord, you can eat them in his honor just on his feast. <laughs> Please stand. Great job. Protegi sempre la tua famiglia, o oh Signore, che hai nutrito alla mensa del pane di vita, nel ricordo glorioso di San Giuseppe, e custodici in noi i doni del tuo amore del Padre, per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Il Signore sia con voi. Vi benedica Dio onnipotente, Padre e Figlio e Spirito Santo. Amen. La messa è finita. Andate in pace. Thanks be to God.